Yo, how's it bouncing, gang? I'm a little hyped today. I'm just a little bit hyped because dark mode is finally coming to iOS 13. Bloomberg dropped a massive report, not only details about iOS 13, but about the next iPad Pro, the next 10 inch iPad, the next iPhones, the 2020 iPhones as well. There's so much to break down in this video. So if you're excited, drop a like, it always helps me out. And of course, hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any future videos. Let's go ahead and get started. So the bombshell in this report, something that I didn't think we'd be hearing about, something that I thought would be a total surprise if it would ever end up coming, iOS 13 dark mode. We've been asking for this, I think since iOS 6 or 7. I remember there were rumors about it back then. There were rumors about it coming to iOS 8.2, I think back in the day. And finally, guys, it is coming in iOS 13. All of this comes courtesy of a brand new report from Bloomberg written by very well-respected Apple publicist, uh, Mark Gurman, who's always got good scoops and nearly everything that this man puts out ends up being true. So be pretty confident in the fact that iOS 13 is going to be when we finally see a dark mode. Uh, when I worked on my iOS 12 concept last year, that was one of the tentpole features that I included just because I want it really badly. Uh, and this is actually created by Maximus Angelicus, who I worked with on this dark mode concept. Super talented designer, I'll leave his stuff down below. But if we got something that looked anything like this, I think it would be absolutely incredible. Let me know how you'd want it to look down below in the comments section and if Apple has finally answered your dark mode prayers. Now, aside from that, we also got some other iOS 13 news. So more confirmation again that the home screen is going to see a pretty big redesign. The emphasis in this article though was on the iPad. So if you do have an iPad that will be able to run iOS 13, you're gonna see a pretty big home screen revamp. Still no exact description of how it's gonna look, although uh, Bloomberg confirmed a while back that there will be some changes on the iPhone as well. There's also gonna be some other pretty big upgrades on the iPad only in iOS 13. One of them is super cool. It's been on the Mac and on PC, on desktop computers forever being able to view tabs inside of apps. So rather than having to open different app windows for everything, let's say you wanna open four or five pages or Microsoft Word documents at the same time. According to Mark Gurman in iOS 13, you'll be able to do just that and tab through everything uh, just like you can on the Mac, which is super cool. I think that that's a great power user feature and I'm very happy to see that coming to iOS 13. The last reiteration here is that the CarPlay interface is also going to be revamped in iOS 13, probably to coincide with the iPad iOS 13 home screen redesign. We don't have any details of how it could look, no concepts, no images, but wanted to let you know again that if you do have a wireless CarPlay or wired CarPlay in your vehicle, or you're looking at a vehicle with CarPlay, pretty big changes coming to that with iOS 13 as well. Now also explained in this article is how Apple's gonna be rolling out their new subscription services. So we saw confirmation in iOS 12.2 that they're working on a new news magazine subscription service. We also heard leak that they're working on this TV video movie streaming service as well. And according to Bloomberg, Apple's going to release iOS updates later in 2019 with those features embedded in them. It's just unclear at this point whether that's going to be something like iOS 12.2, 12.3, or if Apple's saving these major subscription updates for iOS 13 or even something like iOS 13.1. All right, so that is everything we've got on iOS 13 in this report. I wish there was more. A lot of this was reiterating what we had already heard in some form or another in the past. Now, if we would have just gotten that in an article, I would have been pretty happy. Dark mode coming is a pretty big deal, but it doesn't stop there. Uh, Bloomberg actually goes to talk about a lot of other details about not only the 2019 iPhones, but also the 2020 iPhones. Their sources are pretty good finding out what Apple's working on very far into the future. Uh, let's start with the 2020 iPhones just because we haven't really heard much about them at all. We've heard that 5G will be coming to the 2020 iPhones, but now we're hearing about a new 3D laser camera system that Apple's also working on. So this laser scanner technology was initially planned for the 2019 iPhones, but apparently Apple has delayed that until some point into the future, likely in 2020 at the earliest. You're gonna be able to accurately map things in the real world uh, in 3D. So if I held my phone here, it would be able to very accurately map like the camera in front of me, the microphone above me, the light over here uh, to my left, your
your right. You're gonna be able to do that. And it's clear that Apple's working on this because they continue to highlight how much they value AR augmented reality. I've struggled a lot to like AR and really get it and really understand it, but Apple continues to show us that they care about it. So I'm hoping that one day those efforts are going to pay off because right now, all of this sounds cool. It sounds like it could have practical use. Like maybe if you were walking down the street and you could have Apple Maps really show you the exact direction to walk in front of you because of the new laser sensor technology, that'd be cool. But we're not hearing that. We're just hearing that Apple's working on it. So like, I think there's practicality coming. It's just not here yet. More practical is what Apple's gonna be doing this year with the 2019 iPhones. So again, Bloomberg confirms the fact that at least one model is going to have three cameras. The problem is that they doubled down on the Wall Street Journal's report that said only the Max iPhone in 2019 is gonna have three lenses. So that means if you buy even the $1,000 iPhone 11, what it's likely gonna cost in 2019, you're only gonna get two cameras, which is really frustrating for me. The 5.8 inch OLED screen on here is perfect for me. I don't wanna go bigger. I tried the Plus in 2018, I didn't like it, and or the Max, I keep calling it the Plus, but the Max in 2018, and it wasn't great for me. I do not wanna to have to buy the Max sized iPhone in 2019 just to get three cameras. I wanna get that on my normal sized iPhone, and it doesn't sound like Apple's gonna be doing that, which is really frustrating for me to hear, and I think it'd probably be frustrating for a lot of you as well. Do you like the fact that this Max model would exclusively have the triple lens setup, or do you want that on all the models that come out this year? With the third camera, what could that actually enable you to do besides a 3X zoom? Well, Bloomberg says it could also capture more pixels so that Apple software could, for example, automatically repair a video or a photo to fit in a subject that may have been accidentally cut off from the initial shot. That's really, really cool. That would be a game changer and really make me fall behind the idea of a triple camera setup more so than I already am. They also continue to go on saying, uh, Apple's planning an enhanced version of live photos, which pins video from before and after each shot to the photo. The new version will double the length of the video from three to six seconds. So live photos too could be shipping on the 2019 iPhones as well. Hopefully that live photos feature comes to all the 2019 iPhones where the third lens could be the only physical thing to enable enable capturing things that are outside of the initial frame. And these sound like actual features I would use. I see Samsung, I even see Apple do it sometimes. Like, let's talk about Memoji and Animoji. They're cool, I use them every once in a while, but they're much more gimmicky. They're just to demo how Face ID and the True Depth camera system can work, how it can track you. These features sound like things where I would actually use them in the real world and use them regularly. And we're hearing once more in this report that Face ID is gonna see an upgrade year over year there's gonna be a physical sensor change from 2017 to 2018. The processor got faster, so it allowed Face ID to unlock quicker. It sounds like there's gonna be an actual hardware change this year, which is gonna be cool. It's gonna future-proof this iPhone for a number of years. All right, that's all the iPhone news that I gotta talk about. Moving on from that, rounding out this report, Bloomberg shares a number of new iPad details. First up, if you're looking to buy a new iPad Pro, Pretty much any time in 2019 is gonna be a good time to do that because the iPad Pro line will not be seeing any major upgrades this year. And part of me says, oh, I really wish it would get updated. The other part of me says it's really good in its current state and it just got updated at the end of 2018. Bloomberg says that there's the possibility for the new 3D laser system uh, with the mapping functionality to come to that iPad first in 2020 before it comes to the iPhones in 2020. So at earliest, the new iPad Pro or the next iPad Pro is gonna be coming out in spring of 2020, but of course that could be delayed. So buy the iPad Pro in 2019 if you want it. As far as other iPads go, namely the budget $329 iPad and the iPad mini, do not buy those right now. A Bloomberg reports that they're probably gonna be coming as early as spring of 2019, which is just a couple of months away. This adding more fuel to the fire that Apple will probably be holding a March event to announce new iPads. We don't know about pricing for these iPads, although Bloomberg does say that the next iPad mini is going to be potentially lower cost than it is now. And the 9.7 inch budget iPad that currently retails for 329 is going to be getting a display size increase up from 9.7 to right around 10 inches. There's no specific detail about the new 10 inch iPad, but Bloomberg says it's going to retain the light 
lightning port, so unfortunately USB-C not coming to the standard iPad line, or I don't think the iPad mini line as well just yet, but a faster processor is coming to the new 10 inch iPad. And that is this report. We got so much detail today. We learned so much about what Apple's working on, and it makes me pretty hyped for the future of the company. It was really slow near the end of 2018, but AirPods 2 are on the way, new iPads are on the way. Apple's working on some crazy iPhone at tech, not only for this year, but also for 2020. And iOS 13, guys, dark mode confirmed. It's on the way, and I've never looked forward to an iOS update more than I have for iOS 13 since I've been making YouTube videos. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed watching, drop a like down below. Always helps me out, and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else. I've been Sam. Thank you so much for your continued support here on YouTube. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video.